The final verdict on the book of Acts in regard to the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hi, welcome to today's little lesson. Thank you so very much for joining me. If you are a regular viewer, you know that we've been spending weeks studying the biblical subject of speaking in other tongues and the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And we've just completed a survey of the book of Acts, every place we could find something relevant to the topic. And we found actually five places in total where uh, the historical record that Luke recorded for us in the book of Acts says something about people being baptized in the Holy Spirit or filled with the Holy Spirit or the Holy Spirit falling upon a group of people uh, and any place we found mention of speaking in tongues. And we found actually a total of five places. Um, they are in Acts 2, Acts 8, 9, and 10, and Acts 19. And in this little lesson, I want to just review them to try to determine uh, if there's a consistent pattern in what we're seeing, because I don't believe that the book of Acts was recorded so we could all think about how wonderful it would have been to live back in that day, but we could never ever experience what they experienced in our day. No, I think it's recorded for us uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit to help us always know what is the pattern for Jesus building his church. And he builds his church by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's quite evident in the book of Acts. You take out the Holy Spirit and his work from the book of Acts and you've got nothing really of any significance left. And if there's anything that the modern church needs more than anything else besides the, actually a return to the a biblical gospel, we need the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so um, as we looked at these five instances in the book of Acts, we were looking for little indications uh, do, uh, the, that it would help us understand the pattern that we should expect for ourselves today. Was the baptism in the Holy Spirit that we read about in these chapters, did it happen simultaneous with salvation? When people believed in Jesus, did they get all that they could possibly get of the Holy Spirit at that moment? Or were there instances where the baptism in the Holy Spirit was subsequent to salvation? And were, 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 was there speaking in tongues mentioned uh, as, as the initial evidence in these various cases? And if there was, did just a few speak in tongues or did all speak in tongues? And, and so by looking at, at this survey of the book of Acts, it's going to help us to know what is God's will for us and then, of course, that's the whole goal of the series is to build faith in you so that you can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues like I have received and like tens of millions of other Christians have received. Okay, so let's go through the survey very, very quickly, but not rushing. Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, 120 people were in the upper room, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They had these manifestations of tongues of fire, sound like a mighty rushing wind and so forth. That's unique uh, for that instance. But um, uh, there was speaking in tongues, right? And everybody, there's no indication that only a few, only a small percentage of them spoke in tongues. No, it seems to indicate that all 120 spoke in tongues. So the initial evidence for their baptism of the Holy Spirit for 120 people was that they spoke in tongues. And was their experience subsequent to salvation? Well, yes, of course. All those 120 people, had they died prior to the day of Pentecost, they would have gone to heaven. So they were saved. Now, I, I think, it, it, just to be fair, they couldn't have been uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit subsequent, uh, or, or uh, simultaneous with their salvation because it wasn't until the day of Pentecost uh, when the Holy Spirit was was poured out. Okay, so in all fairness to the the actual record. So then we went to Acts chapter 8 when after the great persecution that arose in connection with Stephen, Philip, later is called an evangelist, goes down to Samaria, preaches the gospel to them in Samaria, and this is, you know, this is a little bit of missionary activity here because these are not just straight, strict, purebred Jews and so forth. But many people are responding when they see these miracles that are done by the Holy Spirit through Philip. And um, uh, we, we read, and this was a, this was really a crystal clear 
um, scripture that when Jerusalem, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, and, and, and so there, there's proof, they'd received it. They, they actually had been baptized in water. Uh, so the, and there's no doubt they were saved. Philip would have never baptized them had they not made a, an authentic profession of uh, faith in Jesus Christ. But when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent down to them, they sent Peter and John down to them, two preeminent apostles, to pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was subsequent to salvation by days, weeks, maybe even months for the Christians in Samaria, the new Christians there. Did they speak in tongues? It doesn't say they spoke in tongues, but uh, Simon the Magician, remember this one, he saw something fantastic happening when Peter and John were laying hands upon people and they w were being baptized in the Holy Spirit. He'd already seen great joy. He'd already seen many miracles, demons being cast out of people already seen uh, paralyzed and lame people walking according to the record in their book, book of Acts. So what he saw must have been fantastic because he tried to buy the power uh, to, to, to be able to do what Peter and John did. And they, of course, rebuked him for it. So uh, some, some of the early church fathers, their writings say, uh, what, was the, what was it that Simon saw? He, he saw them uh, and heard them speaking in tongues. So it doesn't emphatically say they spoke in tongues, but something very supernatural was happening. It's safe to assume that it was speaking in tongues, and again, it was subsequent to salvation, and no indication that just some, all. All right, Acts chapter 9, Saul on the road to Damascus, a big persecutor of the church, he's knocked down on the road to Damascus, and um, you know the story, he's blinded, he's led into, into Damascus, he's told to wait there, um, and then eventually God sends one of his servants, Ananias, to go and lay hands upon him that Paul, Saul might receive his sight and that he might also receive the Holy Spirit, according to Ananias' own testimony. And so there's no doubt that Saul was saved prior to Ananias getting there to lay hands upon him to receive his sight. And, and because, you know, on the road to Damascus, he was knocked down by the Lord. Who, who, who are you, Lord, that I'm persecuted? I'm Jesus. Well, I think that probably Saul believed in Jesus from that point onward. And he obeyed his new Lord and went to Damascus. All right? There's no way he wasn't a Christian at that point in time and didn't believe in Jesus. Come on. Uh, so it was three days after he was born again that Saul, later Paul, was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Doesn't say, Luke didn't record that he spoke in tongues right there, but we all know that Paul, the apostle, was a tongue talker. He told the Corinthians, I thank God I speak in tongues more than you all. Okay? And, and did all speak in tongues? Well, there's only one guy. Yes, all did. Paul did. Acts chapter 10. When um, Cornelius' household um, receives the gospel from Peter, who comes down from Joppa by divine uh, direction. And as um, he's preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit falls upon them. So in this case, um, was their baptism of the Holy Spirit subsequent to salvation? Doesn't seem like it was. It seems like it was you know, simultaneous, or if not simultaneous, within a second of them being born again. Now, understand, the Jewish believers and, and Peter who were there, they had a hard enough time believing that Gentiles could be saved. This was the first time. And they would have never, ever laid their hands upon these guys and prayed for these guys to be baptized with Spirit. God did it sovereignly. Was there speaking in tongues? Yes, that's how all the Jewish believers knew that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit because they heard them speaking in other tongues. And Peter said, how can we refuse water to, in baptism for these folks that have received the Holy Spirit just like we did years ago, you know, in, um, in, in on the day of Pentecost in Jerusalem? I think it was like nine years earlier. So um, subsequent to salvation, no. But did they speak in tongues? Yes. Was it all or just a few? It seems like it was all. And then finally, Acts chapter 19, Paul is on his missionary journey up in, up in Ephesus. He comes across some disciples. This is pretty recent in, the, in our little lessons. And you remember the story. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Obviously, Paul believed that it was subsequent to salvation. And after he then led them to the Lord, in a sense, and baptized them in Christian baptism, then, then after they're saved and have made a profession of faith in Christ, then he lays his hands upon them and they all start speaking in tongues. So it was their baptism of the Holy Spirit was subsequent to their salvation. They spoke in tongues, and it wasn't just a few of them. It was all 12 men. And there you have all the evidence. Now, there are theologians who try to tell us, bless their <coughs> hearts, that the book of Acts is not a theological book, 
but it's just a historical record for us to not know it's not a pattern for the church and we shouldn't try to build any doctrines from the book of acts oh no it's just a historical rendition but if we want theology we should go into you know the epistles and so well where is that in the bible where does it say anywhere in the Bible that the book of Acts is just a historical record that we shouldn't build any theology from the book of Acts? Oh my goodness. Come on. This is so easy, only a theologian could miss it. <clears throat> this is so obvious. Only a theologian could, 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 could miss it. You know, there are words of Christ in the book of Acts that you won't find anywhere else in the Gospels or in the Epistles. That's right. In one of the sermons of one of the apostles, he said, remember the, remember the Lord told us it's more blessed to give than receive. That's only in the book of Acts. But we don't want to pattern anything after the book of Acts because it's just a book of, of history and not theology. <laughs> no, 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 sir. You're wrong. And you, you need, need to, like, get a, get a Christian life. Because uh, just because you're a theologian doesn't mean you're a Christian. <clears throat> okay, so I've come to the conclusion that if you're going to have a New Testament experience, you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit at some point in time after you're born again, unless God sovereignly baptizes you in the Holy Spirit within a second of when you were born again, like he did to the folks in Samaria. But that was an exception, not the rule. The, the general pattern we see in the book of Acts is baptism in the Holy Spirit, subsequent to salvation, initial evidence evidence that it pervades all these. Now, again, some had unique things. On the day of Pentecost, they saw tongues of fire. They heard a mighty rushing wind. In, um, some, in Ephesus, they not only spoke in tongues, they prophesied. But the consistent thing throughout all of them is speaking in other tongues. So that's the initial evidence that you could have faith to expect. And is it just for a few? Or does the book of Acts indicate that uh, it's for everyone who believes, every believer in Christ? book of Acts confirms it's for everybody, it's not just for a few. <clears throat> okay, you say, yeah, but the Bible says do all speak in tongues, and the answer is obviously no. Yes, I know that. We're going to come to that eventually. I have briefly touched on that in the past, but you don't want to build your theology on one little scripture, right? That's a, that's a rule. Build your theology on the entire revelation. That's why I've just looked at all five examples in the book of Acts, okay? So hopefully your faith is growing. If you haven't already been baptized in the Holy Spirit, well, why don't you pray and ask God in faith and believe you receive when you pray and open your mouth, expecting that the Lord will give you the utterance by the power of the Holy Spirit and start speaking in other tongues. We're getting reports from um, our uh, viewers that that's exactly what some of them are doing, okay? And there's a lot more to come. All right, I'm happy. I hope you're happy. And don't don't quit. Don't give up. Don't, don't lose any hope. Nope, 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 nope. Stick with us and uh, keep watching these, these lessons, all right? Uh, before I leave, I do want to encourage you to visit davidservant.org that's where you can find everything I've ever written over these last few decades and uh, I think I agree with most of it still <laughs> okay but you can always examine it in light of the word of God and just see if uh, if you're in agreement too and hope it'll be a blessing to you and help you in your walk with the Lord until next time may the Lord bless you richly <laughs>